So guys, in this video we're gonna learn how to scrape uh, content from infinite scroll web pages fed by Ajax requests. So quite often it happens that you're facing a site when uh, as far as you hit the bottom of the window a new bunch of content has been downloaded. So how to scrape that sort of site? Uh, if you just simply have a look at the page, uh, at the source code of the page that we'll see uh, the, on, uh, the only first elements, first 10 elements in this particular case, well I know that because I equate that site for the educational purposes myself, that's why I know this. So only the first 10, out, 10 elements available for scraping like movie genre, country year, etc. And uh, the rest of the content is uh, downloaded dynamically using the Ajax post request uh, over here but it's not actually the way how to, uh, how to find out the way uh, how the uh, content has been dynamically downloaded so the right way for doing that is actually to invoke a developer tools uh, either in Chrome or Firefox browser it doesn't really matter that much and if you just uh, okay so not like that we just uh, clear just update this page okay, what's wrong here okay so just navigate to the network tab I just wanted to clear this stuff to be honest okay just this one more time okay and now as far as I hit the bottom of the window a new Ajax request fires here. We see that it uses the post method and this is the particular URL that we can kind of make use of. So let's actually start writing a scraper code at the moment. So uh, first first we need to import a couple of libraries. So I say import request to be able to make an HTTP post request in this case and also do we need beautiful soup here well not sure probably we don't because we would be fetching the data directly from the API all the way along okay so request would be just enough now I, I'll draft the draft the class called infinite scroll infinite scroll scraper and find uh, and define a couple of methods here. So first would be fetch, and it would take a URL as the parameter. The second would be the parse method. It would take a content as the parameter. The con content, okay. So we will need to store the data, the scrape data to the CSV file. So let's define the to CSV method here. So uh, and no arguments for for now at least. And also the main run method to actually start the scraper. So like this. Now I'll draft a quick driver here, so I say if name is equal to main, this line is needed to avoid running the scraper in case if it is if it's used as a module. So bear that in mind. So I say scraper is equal infinite scroll creating the infinite scroll scraper instance and simply say scraper up run and let's actually invoke the console and try to see if everything if, if it actually works or not so I say python 3 chambers Okay, so it works perfectly well at the moment. Okay, and uh, the fetch method itself uh, would be returning the response uh, that is taken from the 
particular URL endpoint. So let's create the response variable equal to requests. And this uh, uh, before uh, we've been using the get method, but this time as far as we have a post method uh, defined here in the headers that's the case why we need that's the because we need to use the post method at the moment so let's create, a, let's create the post method here and then the url and also we would need to use the parameters so let's include the parameters like this so we say params is equal to params the first params is uh, is the name for the particular argument of the rec of the request post function, and this parameters is uh, the argument of the fetch method uh, taken by the fetch method. So hope that's clear. Uh, and also we need to return this post. Yeah. And also, as far as we'll be making uh, many requests here, so we want just to print some debugging information. So we say HTTP post request to URL and then specify the URL itself. So URL like this. And also at the end, we want to print nothing here. And we say uh, uh, well, we can actually check if the status code is equal to 200. But in this particular case, it would always be the, two, the 200s because no anti scrapping measures on this side or things like that. So we can actually simply print uh, like. Uh, response itself uh, maybe well okay but let's just uh, let's print the status code uh, what do we got still so we say status code and here we'll specify the response dot status code like that and now let's actually uh, try to Pass uh, the actual URL, the fetch method, and try to invoke that. So I create another response variable in the run method. So I say fetch, and the URL that was supposed to scrape. And instead of providing, well, we, we could have actually uh, leave uh, this URL as is and simply. Uh, added in the string each time we're making a request but uh, actually the request library allows us to do this in a, a far more beautiful way basically so we can specify those parameters uh, in the following way so here I just define the parameters uh, variable this would be a dictionary so uh, I say that the index would be equal zero and what else and limit limit uh, be equal to 10 at this time so and also we need to pass the parameters to, the, to our fetch method like this and after that uh, we need actually to has the content to the parse variable uh, to the parse method so I s just can simply say self the parse uh, response and here we'll use the JSON method that would allow us actually to extract the JSON data and convert this to the Python to the Python dictionary so probably this content would already be the type of Python dictionary but let me just quickly check that out so I just want to print uh, first let's print the content itself and then the type of content okay so probably it's time to start the scraper Okay, name fetch is not defined, of course it's not, self not fetch. 
Okay, so here we have our response, and yes, as, as I was expecting, it, it's the class of Python dictionary. So, of course, you could have done this uh, manually, you could have just uh, passed the response.txt to the parse method. In that case, you would need to import the JSON uh, module to actually parse that manually. And we'll, we'll still uh, import this just to pretty print, uh, just to pretty print the response. So. Let me just quickly demonstrate that. So import JSON in here. I actually want uh, to do uh, here. So let's. So is this okay? Data okay. So um, so we need JSON JSON dumps content and specify the indentation indent equals to two so now it should pretty print the response like in a more user-friendly way like this okay so uh, what we need to extract is uh, located within the uh, data key uh, here so we need to extract all the, ele the elements from this kind of list so that's that's actually what we need to do at the moment so um, well let's let's define the data variable as content.data like this and let's actually print print our data again okay there's no attribute Oh, it's not the attribute. So I, I've been <laughs> I've been making JavaScript video recently, so that's the reason I used that animation. Sorry for that, guys. So okay, so here we got our list, and now we need uh, actually to loop over the list. Uh, uh, but before that, uh, let me quickly create the results variable, uh, which is the list that would be storing uh, the results, or or maybe. Maybe I probably just don't even need that. So as far as far as we're not converting anything, so let's actually try. It's okay. So we don't need. We don't even need. So we can already write this kind of stuff to the CSV file. So uh, okay. Hold on a sec, guys. Just well, actually, let's. Let's actually create that results variable because we we have an, uh, many portions of data. So results would be a type of list. Mm, and here I need to simply to loop uh, over over the over the data list uh, for entry in data. And here I'll say self results append entry like this okay and here I would like actually to see for entry in self dot results like this and also involve the self to the CSV here as well so let's see this one more time okay so we have the data but this time uh, this is already a data in the results list okay so this is just great now, uh, now we need to loop over the indexes. So each time we'd be incrementing 10 uh, to the index. So we'd be scraping a new portion, for a new uh, portion, yeah, of data, a new part of data as well. So uh, let's actually loop over the range of the indexes for now. So I say for. Um, page 
in range from zero to, and here we, we need to specify the number of pages. Well, as far as I'm not sure what's the, what's the particular number of pages here, uh, let's actually have 10 pages. So uh, there would be at least 10 pages at the moment. So it's, it's not really that much important here. So um, okay, hold on a sec. Okay, and we also need uh, to increment the index key of the parameters. So I say params uh, index index plus plus equals 10. So we want to increment this by 10. And let's actually quickly check that out. So uh, I want to print uh, just let's print the parameters like this. Okay, so now we're looking over the indexes, so 10, 20, 30, and so on. Okay, this seems to be just exactly what we need here. And uh, also, it's a good practice to make uh, some sort of delays between the requests. Well, in this particular case, it's not needed because this site is welcoming you to, uh, to scrape it for its created for the educational purposes, but still uh, for time it's it's generally a good habit to create at least a two seconds delays uh, after each request is made so i say time.slip uh, and let's sleep for two seconds here and this is basically it now i just let uh, 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 just uh, uncommanded the two CSV and just yeah I just forgot to actually implement the two CSV method itself so here we need to create a false stream so I say with open uh, well results dot CSV we not want to uh, open the file stream to to, to write bytes as CSV file, uh, CSV file, and also we need to import uh, the CSV module to create what is known as dictionary writer. So when we're dealing with a list of dictionaries in Python, that's the case uh, when we would like, definitely like to use what is called a dict uh, writer in the CSV module. So I create the writer object here and say csv.dictwriter and I provide this csv file itself as the file stream of the second uh, parameter is called the field names so this one would be the very first so we just want to use uh, all the keys uh, from whatever element well, I'll be using the very first element so the keys are, liter are literally the, the column names so I say self results self dot results. Let's take the very first element and extract the keys from it. Uh, okay, and uh, now we want to write the headers to the CSV file. So I simply say writer dot write header like this. And now we need to loop over the rows in the results so say for row in self results and here we need to say writer dot write row and pass the row uh, row as the parameter and uh, this is it basically, basically print a little debugging information here uh, store dates store data in CSV file. Okay, so and I hold my breath and try to run this stuff. Okay, so we're making uh, HTTP GET requests to our site, and if we just uh, open uh, a dashboard here, then we would be actually able to see 
this very last request. So here, here are the post requests that uh, were done by our application. So that's how it looks like from the server side. Uh, so it's no, uh, not much. <laughs> So no user agent is not specified, not much hitters as well. So here the server has detected all the requests that we, we've done. Okay, so and we get the uh, results.csv file. I, I don't want to open this in the text editor because for some for some reason uh, computer stats lagging re really really much so it starts to be slow as hell so instead I just open it using the LibreOffice so just to make sure all the data is stored correctly so let's see Well, we could have also get rid of the ID, but that's already doesn't really matter that much. So we have the country director, gender, poster, release year, and starting team, the title, everything here. So well, we could have uh, changed the order of this uh, particular uh, columns, but that doesn't that doesn't really matter that much. The main thing that we have actually a hundred a hundred of entries exactly uh, the same number for the 10 pages that we try to scrape so uh, as you can see here guys that when we're dealing with a, a scrape and infinite scroll pages fed by ajax requests it's more like scraping the api rather than web scraping so we didn't even use the beautiful soup module in this particular video so bearing that in mind uh, mm, you must you must understand that op often uh, web scraping is not really web scraping but it might be an api scraping there are many also uh, also there are many other cases when the infinite scroll is uh, is not retrieving uh, json data instead it may it, it may retrieve uh, some some sort of html like xml like data that is appended to the um, that is appended to the page itself so I'll say like if here we would see uh, here, sorry. So if you just go to the chambers, the chamber number seven. So just have a look at the source code again. So here uh, I'm doing this in a pretty dumb way. I'm just uh, appending using the jQuery. I'm appending the element uh, to the end of the, uh, to the to the end of the page. Uh, uh, to be exact, I'm appending this to to the movies div, uh, the uh, the div element with the ID that is. Uh, has the name movies so so here uh, the javascript actually uh, defines the html tags to be added up so you might have also face uh, uh, a case when you retrieve this particular uh, html or xml content or whatever it might it might be wrapped somehow so it might be malformed or something in that case uh, beautiful soup might be the case uh, to use actually to parse this if it, so that's actually possible. Well, so uh, I mean, like uh, this Ajax fed uh, HTML uh, Ajax fed infinite scroll is the most kind of very basic uh, from those that exist, the most easy to implement and the most easy to scrape. So I hope this helps you at some point. So until the next time, and take care.